Meantime, you're experiencing what actually did happen from the perspective of two of the main characters, Seema and Lynn, who have evolved as I've been writing them. I've been writing this story for a very long time, uh, and I, I wanted to write a story about women who were friends, but also who were in a complicated relationship because of privilege and power structures, but who were both in a situation where they really didn't control their own futures, um, Seema in part because she has the ability to hear the gems, which is not a good ability, except in the case of the lapidaries, who when they bind themselves with, and, the, and they do through a pattern of training and ritual, they bind themselves to, a, have a set of rules that they obey in order to not let the gem's influence overwhelm them. And it's something that comes out in the story, but it comes out very subtly, so I'm, I'm glad I get the a chance to explain it here a little bit more. Lynn, on the other hand, is born to power, and she and Seema are together because um, Seema is her lapidary. She is a jewel, she's part of the royal family, and Seema is like a courtier or a servant that uh, is working for Lynn in particular. And Lynn is the youngest daughter of this royal family, and she's not been given a lot of guidance on how to rule or how to negotiate or how to um, conduct diplomatic matters. She's been basically prepared to marry away. And so she doesn't have a lot of the secrets of the realm. She's also not necessarily viewed as someone who is capable of commanding a room by her siblings or her parents. And yet, when we start the story, we find out that they're in a situation where they need to be capable of doing those things very quickly. There are a number of stories in this whole cycle, um, and each one deals with a stone. The jewel in her lapidary deals with a lot of gems all at once, and it's the story of how they were scattered and how they came to be part of the larger society and causing problems all over this area.